Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 28th. Before I get started with my stories, I would like to promote this week's episode of Mythbusters, which will be seen tonight. It's Sunday morning right now, and the show it's entitled Driving in Heels. And the part of the show that to me is going to be most interesting, if you've followed Mythbusters, you know they've done many, many shows on duct tape, but I have seen very few shows with any connection to super glue, well, this will be the show that if you've been waiting for that, uh, this will be the show for you. They're going to attempt to glue furniture upside down onto a ceiling, and they're also lifting weights just to see what one drop of super glue can do. If you go to the Discovery Channel website for the Mythbusters, you can get some pretty long previews of the different sections of this upcoming show. So in, if you miss it, but it's usually like most places on cable or direct TV satellite, whatever you get it, it's going to be rerun several times. This is season eight, episode 25. So this Sunday night and probably for three or four other times during the week after that, it'll be repeated. If you get a chance to catch it, I'm sure it's going to be pretty good. This next article, which is actually more of a video, was sent in by my friend Mick, Bugsplat TV. This guy takes a stretched body of a VW bug on a custom chassis, but the most interesting thing is this VW is powered by a Gixxer 1000 in engine. And also, if you watch the video all the way to the end, it's, there's two short videos, which I think are actually promos for videos the guy is selling. But uh, if you watch the video all the way to the end on the VW, there's also a link in the top right for a tank video. This guy has also built a chassis for a lightweight tank and he hopes to get it up to around 70 80 miles per hour and because of the design I think it'll be pretty easy to do it's not an armored tank it's more like a tubular chassis with tank tracks and it's powered by a six liter twin turbocharged engine so if you get a chance to check out both videos they are really cool if any of you have been following Mozilla and Google in the open standards for web broadcasts of video there's been a fight between the WebM codec and H.264 well, I guess between Google and especially in this case, uh, this article is from Apple Insider, Mozilla has pretty much thrown in the towel and declared that WebM has lost and H.264 is pretty much going to be the web video standard. Um, as I was looking at both of them and the comparisons too, I, I couldn't tell enough difference between WebM or H.264 to really make a difference. It would have been nicer to have WebM being a more open standard. Um, if you read the entire article, you'll find that even WebM had it won the battle. It still wasn't totally unencumbered by licensing um, reasons, but probably more open standard than H.264. But yeah, it does look like in the future that is going to be the codec. It's, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a good codec. I, it's, it's my preferred codec when I do video editing. I usually like my final render to be in H.264. Um, so I guess it'll end up being okay as long as we don't get uh, some kind of licensing fees, fees passed on to us too bad or something like that. That's always a chance you take but things aren't open standard. Here's an article. It's actually a side link to an article sent to me by Harry T. He sent me an article, and I took a side link from the article and found this. It's called An Alternate Look at Handgun Stopping Power. Um, this is from Buckeye Firearms Association. As usual, all the links to all the stories down in the description. And this guy actually independently investigates himself, stopping power all the way from the 22 long rifle round to the 32, 380 auto, 45, 40, and uh, 44 magnum calibers. And if you're talking about a really good study, and I think it confirms what I've myself by uh, you know exploring what I've been able to find out about this, uh, all of them are roughly equal in stopping power. If you're talking about the average confrontation in a handgun fight of approximately two rounds, and if you get two well-aimed rounds to the torso, which is what you want to accomplish to stop whatever the attack is and to render the person ineffective in their attack it seems like any caliber is pretty much as good as any other caliber now the only thing I would say if you look at the charts uh, it's pretty much a done deal as far as if you want to compare it to a 12 gauge shotgun it's pretty much a done deal that a 12 gauge shotgun is going to beat all of them I mean you just point in the general direction pull the trigger and uh, you're basically going to take care of the problem but for handgun calibers this is pretty interesting to look over. Uh, one thing that the guy brought into effect that I, I see a lot of other people don't mention, if you've taken any firearms training, which I've taken quite a bit of it, I've also shot PPC tournament matches for a lot of years, um, when you're trained, you usually train to shoot until the person is unable to um, uh, 
uh, complete their any more actions. So, but if you consider it a different way, which this guy did in the study, you co you shoot until the person is unwilling to continue the confrontation. Well, unwilling and unable are two different things. But either one, the confrontation's over, even if the person is able, but they're no longer willing. You still won the confrontation. So, if you get a chance, to check out this an alternate look at handgun stopping power and calibers. This next one comes from a regular contributor too lately, Desmosa DC Alice. It's talking about that a new chip could possibly be introduced in the future into your cell phone that can actually see through walls, uh, wood, skin, paper. Um, it's basically just a theoretical thing from the University of Texas researchers right now, but uh, the cost of it would be very trivial to add this to mobile cell phones. Um, if you read the whole article, though, I think it's kind of a little bit on the hyped side because it's not like you're going to walk around with your cell phone and then all of a sudden your uh, cell phone provider or Google or something like that is going to have a map of the area you're walking around. You have to also have some kind of a sensing device to be able to pick up the signal even in the... They're talking about these chips produce wavelengths in the terahertz band so they can actually penetrate um, solid objects. Uh, it's it's talking more like... I, I can only see really in the practical future in the next year or two, you would make your cell phone into a glorified stud finder. In other words, with the size sensor it would have, you could hold it up against the wall and do just like a sonic stud sensor to where it would sense that there was more density of the wood behind it rather than uh, air where there wasn't a stud. So I don't think this is anything to get really, at least pre in present time, anything to be worried or uh, stressed out about, but um, that's just kind of a neat thought that the terahertz chips are actually... Uh, be able, would be able to be added to the cell phones for a halfway decent price. Sorry about that. Something's pinching me a little bit. Got something in my pocket or something. Um, okay, this one was sent in by 1954 Shadow. This is a guy that likes to uh, add pulse rocket engines to a bicycle. This is kind of cool. There's also a video down in the end where you can can see them. Pulse jets are actually fairly simple to build, but if you're talking about the valve going back and forth on it, it, it makes such a huge noise that you pretty much need hearing protection. And you'll even be able to tell in this video this guy puts up um, about him going on his bicycle. I mean, I think it gets him up to something like 50 miles per hour or faster, but the noise is just, oh, so loud. It's almost, it would probably be unbearable to do for any length of time. So anyway, if you get a chance to check that out, this is from Wired.com. The bicycle looks kind of cool, too, the way he's got the bicycle design. It's kind of a, a cool-looking bicycle. Dang it. I wonder if I put my pocket knife in my back pocket and left it open. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.